Sheila and Farouk, and they were married romantically. They loved each other very much. It was in the time of the, I think, Abdulaziz's Caliphate, the fifth righteous caliph, when there were no more poor Muslims. Everyone was wealthy. Uh, not Muslim, sorry. Nobody was poor. There were no poor people. Because Islamic economics, finance, and system really did work. Anyways, um, think of a romance like that. So Hila and Farooq are married. They're together for three months. The call of jihad is made. Farooq has to take off and disappear. He leaves her a little bit of money, about 3,000 dirhams, and says to her, make do with this for three months. I'll be back in three months. There's a treasure chest of 30,000 dinars, which is equivalent to 2 million pounds in his house. And he says to her, don't touch that. It's Amara. I'll be back in three months. Because that's what they did. The soldiers would go and come back. Three months went on. Six months went on. Nine months went on. In that time, she found bearing with a child. A year went on. She gave birth to a boy. No sign of photo. year and a half went on. Two years went by. Two and a half years went by. Some man came back from battle and said, I saw Farooq fall. Now she knows he is dead. And so now she opens the treasure chest of two million pounds. Until then she obeyed him, didn't touch it. Three thousand dirhams for that long, subhanAllah, she stretched it. Thirty years go by. She's looking after this boy. She's had a son. She's looking after him. She's paying for his education. She's getting him, you know, looked after, etc. Thirty years go by. Now we're in Medina. This happened in Medina. 30 years she's thinking of Farooq, he was such a great man, my great hero. He fought jihad, he was killed. You know, it was just this amazing guy. She loved him. When he was going, he thought twice, he looked back, she pushed him out the door. She said, have you no fear of Allah? Seek the Jannah and I'll see you there. She, she was a righteous woman. She pushed him out said, go. And he went. Anyways, 30 years go by. Here's Medina. Let's leave the country. Google Earth. Go all the way over to China, okay? We're on the outskirts of the Muslim lands. We're in China, on the borders. Back down onto the earth. Nighttime, fire camp. Army soldiers defending the borders of the Muslims. And amongst them is a man sitting on the bridge. And he's doing what's called ribat, protecting the soldiers while they sleep. And he's having a lookout. Looking up at the stars, the sky, he's feeling a bit romantic, and he's feeling a bit of love with Allah, and he's thinking, he's thinking, all of a sudden he remembers he has this wife he was married to. I wonder how she's doing. What happened? Did she marry on? Did she die? Did she move on? Is she there? Thought starts going mad. 30 years of this jihad for the sake of Allah. And he marched on and on and he was never killed in battle. For anyone who thinks battle will take your life, 30 years this guy's still alive. It's Farooq out on the outskirts of China. When he went, he couldn't stop. The sweetness of defending the ummah and working for Allah, he couldn't go back. He's on the outskirts of China, but now the thoughts. He's older and he's wiser. And he's just not that young, passionate man anymore. He's thinking, my wife, my wife, my wife. That's it. He takes permission from his commander in the morning, hops on his horse from China. He's riding like the wind all the way back to Medina. The closer he gets, his heart is pumping, man. He's going mad. He's going through the Persian. He's coming all the way back through Iraq. The closer he gets, the more mad he goes. What if she's not alive anymore? What if she's married again? All these things are driving him insane. He gets to the city of Medina before going mad in love, running back to his wife. He remembers the sunnah of the Prophet He's a righteous man. He doesn't just go home. He goes to the masjid to pray his two rakah. Because that's what you're supposed to do when you come back from a trip. He went to the masjid Nabi, prayed two rakah, saw it was time for Asr, but what's the point going home? I'll wait, pray Asr, then go home. While he's waiting, he notices the scholars of Medina. Keep in mind, this is the time of Abdul Aziz, subhanAllah, the ulama, the knowledge, Allahu Akbar, the tafsir, the stories. And they're sitting in different patches and people in white gathered around them. The scholars looking beautiful, mashallah. One of them shined out out of all of them, Shaykh Abdul Rahman. He was one of the best knowledgeable people you can imagine. Shaykh Abdul Rahman is the most eloquent of speakers. He's amazed by him. Adhan, Asr, Salah is finished now, right, going home. He's rushing home. As soon as he gets to his house, when he gets to his house, he noticed another man going in and he's thinking, what's happened? And he flips out. He's an Arab. He's got the ghira. He's got jealousy. He said, hey! He goes to the man. He grabs him. This is my house. That's my house. They get into a fight. The city comes in. People gather around. They're like, hey, leave him alone. It's his house. And he's like, I am Farooq. This is my house. Inside the house is an old woman. And she's sitting there. And she hears the sounds. Could it be? 
<laughs> she covers up, she runs out, and she sees him. She shouts, this is my husband, Farooq. Leave him alone. He's been away in jihad for 30 years. Only now has he returned. People began to weep. Farooq and Suhaila embrace in love. And they're together and they're telling stories. They run inside. Now they're laughing, they're joking, they're crying. Everything's coming out. Oh, Farooq, I'm so much older than when you left me. I was young and beautiful. I don't look like that anymore. And he says to me, Suhaila, you are the most beautiful woman in the world. Because he loves her piety. And he's in madly in love with her still. And he's there embracing her. And they're weeping together. Finally, Farooq starts to get to his senses and he goes, Oh, Sahila, there was a treasure chest I left. With Two million pounds in it. 30,000 dinars. What happened? Sahila said, Farooq, let me ask you a question. Did you go to the masjid? She knows he did. She's wise. They're pious. They're religious. It's the sunnah. Did you go to the masjid? You did? Yes, I did. Did you see anything? Amazing scholars. This time has changed. The knowledge of the deen, the way it's being spread. Did you see anyone in particular? One really stood out. What would you give to be that man? I would give anything to be that knowledgeable. Would you give 30,000 dinars for it? Yes, I would. My eyes closed, I would pay two million pounds. What if that was your son? And he said, even more. And he said, that's your son, Abdurrahman. His son was the best scholar of Medina because it was halal money and she spent it all instead of shopping online. She was raising her son in the best Islamic education. Two million pounds she spent in that time. That much money on his education. And today, what do we spend on Islam? Farooq and Suhaila, she said, that's your son. Farooq goes mad. He comes out the house screaming, Ah, Sheikh Abdurrahman is my son. I am Farooq. And he's just dancing, you know, he's excited. Abdurrahman comes, they call him, they say, what? He says, I am his son, where is he? And the man says, I'm Sheikh Abdurrahman. And when he sees him, he realizes the man he was fighting with in the beginning. He was going to his house. That was his son. And he hugs him and he embraces. And the city comes and sees this father jumping up for joy. My son is no ordinary boy. He is Sheikh Abdurrahman. And everyone starts to weep. Everyone is emotional with him. And one of the people that wept, that came to stop the arguing in the first place, was the great Imam Malik. From the Maliki Madhab. What was he doing there? What was he doing there in that crowd? Imam Malik was the student of Sheikh Abdurrahman ibn Farooq. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون